It's time to shout. It is Ladies Conference all this week starting today. Right here, the Daughters of the King. you got to be here. Some of the greatest lineup of women of God that's going to shake this city, shake this house. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. We'll be taking you into a live service. Women, it's good. It's, it's today. This week is the time to take your family back right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. Come on, Daughters of the King, and let's worship God. God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. Yes, he is. You don't want to miss Friday morning miracle service. I will be praying for your family. I will be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030. Every Friday morning, God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. You don't want to miss Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night at 730 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss starting tonight all the way through, actually Thursday night, and you don't want to miss that Friday morning service. Uh, how the, a great anointed woman of God will be speaking I'm, I'm just telling you right now, God is doing some great and awesome things right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. And now in the middle of all that God is doing, these women of God from across the nation is coming in here to bring us some help. They come in here and bring us some support. And you don't want to miss what God is doing right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Uh, I, you know, they let me preach this morning, and I have a word from heaven for you today. I've been preaching on and how to get out of the squeeze. You know, everybody seems to be in a squeeze. You need to get here today that God has a way for you to get out of that squeeze, has a way for you to get out of that cave. 
He has a way for you to get out from among all that stress. And you've got to be here today. It has been a powerful series, and you don't want to miss it today. God is doing great things. But then starting tonight, hallelujah, first lady and the daughters. My, my lovely wife will be speaking. Two of my daughters will be speaking. Hallelujah. God is going to be doing some great and awesome things tonight. First lady, come and when join When I was us. going through my storm, when, I was, when the doctor looked at me in the eye and says, you have cancer, I was going through the storm. And when the, the devil fights you at midnight, why does he fight you at midnight? Because you're by yourself. You're all alone. You're vulnerable. The devil told me, he says, you're not going to live. I've got you. But thank God I have a God that says, no, she's not going to die. Well, then you already know we're going to have a time in the house tonight. As one of my other daughters, uh, Pastor Abigail, comes and she begins to pull down the stronghold. Tonight to get a shovel. And let the devil know that you are coming out of your situation and you're getting ready to dig your way out. You're going to dig your way out of poverty. You're going to dig your way out of depression. You're going to dig your way out of despair. You're going to dig your way out of every lie. I don't know what wilderness that you may be in right now, but let the devil know you picked the wrong person to mess with. You picked the wrong person to play against. There's one thing that I know, that if God be for me, then who can stand against me? If I have a shovel, I can get out of anything. Look at your neighbor and say, can you dig it? Oh, and then, then closing out the service is going to be Pastor Sissy, uh, you know, the ladies pastor right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. She will be ministering, and you get ready. God was going to break some things in your life. Mothers, if your family's falling apart, you need to get here tonight. I'm telling you, uh, you know, the mother, uh, I'm just telling you, tonight is going to be a powerful night right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church, starting at 6 o'clock. Pastor Sissy. So his brothers got jealous. They were mad. And pretty soon they planned. They said, you know what? We're just going to kill him. Then we don't have to worry about it anymore. The devil's going to try to steal your promise by trying to kill it. But let me tell you, he can't kill it. So pretty soon they said, you know what? We know what, we'll throw him in the pit. If we throw him in the pit, then we'll decide what we're going to do. So pretty soon the brothers got mad and thrown him in the pit. And you know what, he could have stayed there. But God had other plans. So people may have thrown you in the pit. Your job may have thrown you in the pit. The people you love may have thrown you in the pit. Your finances may have thrown you in the pit. But you know what? God says, no, no. You stay there for a minute, baby, because I got some big plans for you. And you know what? He could have doubted because you know what? He gets out, he gets out the pit pretty soon to go where? Back, back to somewhere it's horrible. But then all of a sudden, he makes it to the palace, the promise God had already given him. And I can imagine how Joseph felt yet again when God reached down his hand and helped him out and said, you know what? You're not, you're not going exactly to your promise just yet, but hang on because I, you, you have a promise. Oh, you don't want to miss this ladies' conference, the daughters of the king. I'm telling you right now, God is going to be doing some great things. And, and if you're a daughter of the king and it seems like you're not getting what the king has promised, you need to be here this week. And then up on Monday night, Sister Janelle Wade, Dr. Janelle Wade, that is a woman of God that has preached across this nation. She was abused as a child come up. She went through the times of a cult. She was a witch at one time, and God delivered her, and she has power to break uh, you know, your strongholds in your life. If you've ever been uh, abused sexually, you need to be here tomorrow night. You know, if you've ever been, uh, you felt like nobody loved you, you need to be here tomorrow night. Sister Janelle Wade has a word from God right here. Hallelujah with the Daughters of the King Conference, Paxson Revival Center Church, tomorrow night at 7.30 on Monday so night. I'm not going to listen to you. I am not perfect, but thanks be to Jesus Christ. He made me perfect. Glory to God. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, honey, and no one can take that from me. And the devil knows it, and he just makes him mad because he can't get redeemed. Got to tell, tell the enemy, you say, I'm getting back up. I'm getting back up. May have went down, but I'm getting back up. This is my time. I'm getting back up because it's my time. It's my turn to get back up. It's my turn to walk instead of crawl. It's my turn to say it and believe it and get it than to just beg it and beg it and beg it and beg it and act like i got to beg my God to give me something he already gave me. Oh, 
I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Look, somebody say, I'm going to make it. And then on somebody. Tuesday night, Sister Jennifer Beard, a great pastor, a woman of God, I'm telling you now, you just bring your shouting shoes and dancing socks. If you need a word from God, you need to be here with the ladies of the king, coming to daughters of the king, coming to the king upon Tuesday night at 730. You don't want to miss, sister. As a matter of fact, I got to give you a message. He said, let them know that you're not coming by yourself. And he said, when they ask you who is sending you, he said, tell them I am that I am, which literally translates into I will be who I will be. It literally means it is what it is. So God said, my I amness was existing before the beginning, and my I amness will still exist after you come out of what you're going through. See, my name is Jennifer, and my I amness was hinged upon pre existing conditions. Because before I could be, Dorothy May and Raymond Owen had to be. And before they were, Vaughn and Luella and R.L. and Willie Mae had to be. So my, am, my I amness was made possible by their I amness. It was their I amness that made my I amness possible. But what you got to understand about God's I amness is that it required no pre existing conditions. He said, I am that I am. So if you understand that when God said, I am, I am, he, that is a declaration of his sovereignty. So when people have a problem with the blessings of the Lord on your life, you just let them know, I am, said I could. I am has blessed me. And if they have a problem with it, they just got to take that up with I am. Because he said, I can rearrange your life. I can open up doors that need to be open. I can close doors that no man can open. I can open up a window. I can change a mind. I can open up a heart. I can change what needs to be changed. In other words, he said, I ain't got to explain nothing because I am. And that is an explanation of my sovereignty that I'm the one who was and is and is to come. I was here before you got here and long after you go, I will still be because before the day was, I am, I, I am, I am, I am. The grass of the field may flourish and the flowers may fade, but when it's all said and done, I'll still be because I am that I am. I am is a declaration of his deity. There's nobody else who can just show up and say, I am. Because to show up and say I am is a permanent state of existence. When you say I am he, you are saying whatever time that you are in, God is still present. Let me break that down for you because Muhammad cannot say I am. Buddha cannot say I am. Confucius cannot say I am. Because if you go to Muhammad's grave, Muhammad is still there. If you go to Buddha's grave, Buddha is still there. If you go to Confucius' grave, Confucius is still there. Which means they were, but they ain't. But if you go to the Savior of my Lord, there's an empty tomb. Because he got up and he said, I am that I am. I was and I still am. And tomorrow I still. And then on Wednesday be. night, everybody loves Dr. B. Dr. B uh, Dr. Gardner is going to be in the house on Wednesday night. She comes with us two or three times a year. Our people just love her. She comes with a powerful word. She comes with a word that's going to bring a revelation to your life. She comes with power of anointing to break yokes in your life. This is your week. Now, I, I know I say, I say ladies conference, but men, you're welcome to come. Hallelujah. We're not limited and only to, to the ladies. Men, you can come and be a part of what God is doing. We call it ladies conference because ladies are speaking this week. So make your plans to be here. Wife, bring that husband. He, see, he needs to hear what God has to say for you. And upon Wednesday night is going to be the great service, and you don't want to miss it with Dr. Gardner. Joel began to talk about how God has declared a word that in spite of all that is going on, there yet remains a latter rain. 
there yet remain a season of restoration that belong to the righteous people of the Lord. The Lord said something to me. He said something to me, uh, Brother Wade. He said, he said, 2015 is a year of reveal and release. It is a year of reveal and release because God is going to begin to reveal some things that you had not seen. He's getting ready to open up your eyes and show you some things that you had not experienced. And once he show it to you, he's going to release what he show you immediately. In other words, delay is over. Come on and tell somebody, delay is over. We have been delayed so many times over and over again. And we have gone through circumstances over and over again. And it looked like God have not fulfilled what he said. It looked like the enemy has the upper hand. But Joel said, in the last days, says the Lord of hosts, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. The Lord said to me, he said, all I'm looking for is somebody that I can pour it into. It's not that I'm short on spirit. It's not that I'm short on the anointing. I'm looking for some people that's willing to allow me to pour myself into them. I'm looking for some people that will say, Lord, I'm hungry enough to wait on you to pour you into me. I'm thirsty enough. The Bible says, he that hunger and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. He said, the only reason why my church is not filled with the anointing now is because the people are not hungry enough to cry out to me that I might fill them with my righteousness. He said, in the last days, touch somebody and say, we're already here. If you haven't tracked the scriptures, we're already in the last and evil days. But the Bible said the end is not yet, and the end cannot be yet until this gospel of the kingdom has been preached in every nation. In other words, God said, I'm not going to finish this thing until you understand what the kingdom is all about. He said, you've been in church long enough. Now you need to understand what the kingdom is all about. Jesus preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we're transitioning now into the outpouring of the Spirit of God into the citizens of the kingdom. Tell somebody I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I have a father and he is a king. He has a kingdom and that includes me. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God and God is saying it's not that I don't want to move for my people. I'm just looking for somebody that I could put me in to move on behalf of the people. Paul picks it up. He says the earth is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons of God, non-gender. The sons and the daughters of God who will allow me to pour my spirit on the inside of you so that you can take that same spirit and pour it on the inside of somebody else. Why? Because somebody is waiting on you to get delivered so that you can deliver them. Somebody is crying out for a healing, but you won't be healed. The church won't be healed. The church won't be delivered. Delivered. He said, when you get your deliverance, then you're going to deliver a nation. When you get your deliverance, then you're going to deliver a world. When you get your deliverance, then we're going to see the hand of God. We can't see anything until we get it first. Touch your neighbor and say, this is not osmosis. You're not just going to wake up and something's just going to change just because you woke up. It requires us to participate. Somebody say participate. Come on, say participate. The Bible said, in the last day, says the Lord of hosts, I will pour out of my spirit. I will pour out of my revelation. I will pour out of my knowledge. I will pour out of my power. What good is it for God to give us revelation, knowledge, and power, and we're going to sit on it and do nothing with it? He said, I'm not going to pour myself into somebody that don't want to be used. I have to find somebody that says, here am I, Lord, use me. I'm not too old to be used. I'm not washed up. I'm not over yet. There are some things in me that you want to do for the kingdom. Paul says, we all have been in pain together until now. In other words, Paul said, it's a universal crisis. He said, this is not a world crisis just for the people in the world. He said, it's a church world crisis. We're all in trouble together. And the Bible says it like this. Jesus began to teach to the disciples, and he told the disciples, he said the disciples, as he was talking in parables, he said the kingdom of heaven is like a woman that is needing. 
needing bread. He wanted to bring it down to him as simple as possible. He said, if you can get the concept of what the kingdom of heaven is like, then you can get the concept of how to even receive it. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a woman that is needing bread. And I'm a little country girl because my mama was born in Mississippi. And I remember my mother when she would make yeast rolls. They would be the best yeast rolls in town. My God. My mother would stick her hand. She didn't measure nothing. She would just stick her hand in a bucket of lard, put it over in that pot flour. She would push it down and knead it. She would take that yeast, active yeast, mix it in some milk, pour it over in there. That dough began to rise. After it rise to a certain point, she would take it and push it down again. She would take her hand and smack it in that lard, and she would knead it some more. She would put a warm towel over it, and it would rise again. And I would watch her as a little girl, and I couldn't understand why you had to put so much lard in there. Mama says, it's going to make them soft and tender. Go make them rise up just right. Sometimes God had to put something in us that's going to make us expand. You've been too small and shallow in your thinking, and he want to reach way down and smack his spirit on the inside of you so that the point when he needs somebody that he can make a withdrawal from, you have something on the inside to draw. And then on Thursday night is the big elegant, uh, which is a banquet. It's a night that the, the, these women that's going to be here this week will be ministering personally to everyone that comes out. You need to call the church office. We run out of tickets last year. We, uh, 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 and we put out more chairs and still run out of tickets. We don't want you to lose that opportunity to, to be at the big banquet. It's a big steak dinner. and You get a free T-shirt. But more than that, the presence of God will be in the house. How do you, the daughters of the kings are going to come together and say, we're going to take back what God has promised unto us. I know we call it a ladies' conference, but men, you're welcome to come. We call it a ladies' conference because ladies are speaking. So come and be a part of what God is doing this week. Paxson Revival Center Church. Great things are happening. People's lives are being changed even before this conference. Now, with this conference, I'm getting ready to go to another level right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Go to our webpage, PaxsonRevivalCenter.com. You can hear all these women of God speak. You can, on our webpage, you can find out all the information that's going on. You just want to be a part of this ladies' conference this week, the Daughters of the King. Say it once again, man, you're welcome to come with your, you're with your spouse because it will change your family. When your wife changes, you change, and the house changes. How do we call it ladies' conference? Because ladies will be speaking. Men, you are welcome to come. I'm excited what God is doing. Go to our webpage, PaxsonRevivalCenter.com. If you would like to have a word from Pastor Steve every day uh, on Facebook, I don't do the dramas and birthdays, and I don't get in re- but I love to preach the word of God. Just go and type in Pastor Steve Dobbs. I'll give you a word of God every single day. We're excited what God is doing. This is our year, church. This is Daughters of the King. It is our year right here. You've got to be ready. God is pouring out his spirit. Come and be a part of the great music all week long. Come and be a part of what God is doing. It's going to be an awesome time right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Remember the banquet on Thursday night. You don't have to be a member to come to any of our services. This is not about building. Our church is about building the kingdom of God and about the daughters of the king taking back what the devil stole from them. See you this week. Wife, bring your husband with you. He needs to hear what God has to say. We'll see you here at the ladies' conference, the Daughters of the King. That is tonight at 6 o'clock, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, Thursday night banquet. May God bless you be with our prayer.